guys, welcome to the CMS detector. Okay, so you can keep moving, there's more to see. <laughs> Okay, so I think you guys can very easily tell what I was talking about. So this here is what we call a slice. And you can see, you can even walk under it and you can see how wide it is. This is one of the slices. We have 15 of them. And this particular slice is basically, you can see the muon systems. There's two muon systems that I can point out. On the left, you have the CSCs. The CSCs are cathode strip chambers. And on the right, we have RPCs which are resistive plate chambers. I mentioned earlier that the CSCs, you can check out the lab in the surface, is super cool, and you can see the inside of these chambers. These are both gaseous detectors. And on the right, RPCs, again, these are resistive plate chambers, sorry. And RPCs are very interesting because they are very fast detectors. So we can use this to, um, to determine if we want to keep that collision or not. So let's keep moving to the next slice, please. Okay, so you're welcome to take pictures, but keep in mind that they're going to push us along. There's small groups behind us. Okay, so this part that's sticking out, this is part of the calorimeter end cap. There's two systems. There's the hadronic calorimeter and the, electromag the electromagnetic calorimeter. The electromagnetic calorimeter is very, very cool. It's made up of these scintillators. As I mentioned, they produce light when a particle hits them. And the scintillators are actually grown in the lab. They are crystals that are grown in the lab. And they are made of, uh, basically they're made of lead. And these take two days to grow. We have over 75,000 of them in the detector. So that took 10 years to grow. They're super, super heavy. They're basically made of lead. And it, they're doped with tungsten. And these are uh, basically stopping the particles and producing light. And the more energy that the particles carry, the more light that they actually produce. This is the end cap, and as you can see, there's this sort of, sort of hole there with the yellow scaffolding. So that entire, uh, that entire part sort of goes inside of the yellow scaffolding when the entire detector gets sort of smushed together into one cylindrical, giant cylindrical onion. So you can see most of the parts that are painted red, that's steel. And again, it's like 12,500 tons out of 14,000 tons in total. That's twice as heavy as the Eiffel Tower. So, yeah, the slices, okay, so, so yes, it, it makes it easier to access the detector, but the real reason we made them into slices is because the detector was assembled on the surface, and then it was craned down. So we had to divide it into slices in order to be able to crane those down individually. So the middle slice that you'll see next, it actually contains or is, is incorporated into, the magnet is incorporated into it, and the magnet is the heaviest part. It's a superconducting solenoid, and that... Uh, actually, like it was, everything was designed really carefully. So, for example, the shaft that was. I, let me remind me to point out the shaft uh, that you can see where things were coming down on. Um, so the the shaft. Okay, we move. Uh, the shaft actually had when it, they lowered the magnet, it was basically like centimeters of tolerance. So it took two days to actually lower down the uh, the actual piece, the slice with the magnet, and you can see it right here. So this is the outside of the solenoid, the superconducting solenoid. Guys, please hurry up. Okay, so here you can see the superconducting solenoid. This is just the outside of it. Again, inside of the solenoid, we actually have the tracking and the calorimetry, all of it. On the outside of this, we have only the muon system. The muon system is, the muons are the only thing that punch through outside of the solenoid in addition to neutrinos, which we can't really measure. There, we have some techniques, but let's not go into too much detail. So, the muons 
punch through and you have most of the system around it. But inside of the solenoid is where we have the tracking and calorimetry. This is a very unique feature and um, other detectors, uh, this is why we, why we say it's compact. It's because we can keep all the main components, the tracking and calorimetry inside of the muon of the, of the solenoid. And we have such a strong magnetic field that we're able to bend those particles really quickly. What's the time scale you're talking about? Uh, the time scale for? Yes. So we have to keep moving. So we have collisions up to every 25 nanoseconds and we have to detect all of them. So we just have to decide whether we want to keep a specific collision or not, really. And that's the challenge. I'll go into more detail later. Okay, so here you can actually see a few things. So you can see the yellow scaffolding, that's really the core of the detector, that's where the tracker is, and that's sort of the center of the detector, that's where the interactions happen. Um, you can see a couple of other things. There's an exhibition on the surface about this, but you can see these sort of uh, red cylinders. There's one here, there's another one here. So these are used for the alignment of the detector, and this is critical because we want to align our detector, we need to simulate our detector and how all the particles interact with all the parts of our detector and that depends on the material, if we have carbon fiber, if we have fiberglass, if we have steel, we have brass, all of that stuff. Um, so we really need to simulate that and we need to know where everything is and that's super critical. So you see this sort of hollow slice here, that's purely the muon system. There's three muon systems, we have, I mentioned the CSCs and the RPC, but we also have the drift tubes and we're actually just installing a new uh, muon subdetector called the GEMS, Gas Electron Multipliers. Uh, so this, there's gonna be a quiz at the end, so who can remember all of these acronyms? Come on. All right. So you can see all of the infrastructure. There's lots of cables everywhere. Are these all data cables? These are not all data cables. A lot of them are, but you also have, you, you see these copper wires? A lot of these might be for cooling. You also have systems for, you have high voltages, for example, low voltages, and a lot of infrastructure. So actually, already above us, yes, you can see the shaft that I mentioned. That's the shaft that we use to lower the detector down. Yes, and actually you don't see, uh, you can see it over here too, come on. Do you see the shaft? Actually, there's people walking on the top of the shaft, so normally we would open it and you can see through. Okay, so again, you can see the detector is symmetric, you can see this other part that's sticking out, it's similar to the one we saw earlier. But let me point out, the uh, I mentioned the electromagnetic calorimeter, which is the thinner end towards the tip of this, uh, this part. The, the thicker part, that's actually part of the hadronic calorimeter end cap. The hadronic calorimeter has also kind of a cool story. So the hadronic calorimeter uh, uses plastic scintillators, which are not as dense. So they need an extra layer of absorbers. In our case, we use brass, and we needed a specific kind of brass, and that brass, we found it by having an agreement with the Russian Navy. The Russian Navy agreed to basically melt down a bunch of brass from old artillery shells, and that brass is actually now part of our detector. Yes. So they like stay safe all the time, right? So, okay, let's go. So this orange feet here are pretty interesting. So we blow compressed air down them to help us move the slices. And you can see these thick cables that allow us to tug on the slices. That's how we can move them around. All right, we're gonna go up the stairs. All right, that's gonna be it for the Instagram Live. Thanks for joining, ciao.